My goal today is to drive this 240. Let's see if we can make it happen. In the last video, we left off with replacing the turbo because the old turbo that was on it had no turbine in the exhaust side or the inlet side. And that made me nervous. So I took off the intercooler, which is right here, and I found all of these bits. This used to be the turbine. And after thoroughly inspecting this intercooler, I did not feel comfortable running it, especially on an RB25, which I don't want to buy another one because you can't find them anymore. And I debated running my old intercooler, but you know, this one was sitting outside and it's full of crap. It's like, you know what, let's just get a new one. So we got another one from Injuku. We'll get that installed today. And then I also was waiting on exhaust gaskets so that we can put the exhaust together that we just fabbed up. It had a couple of rust holes in it and I also had to make my own hangers. And we also made a flex pipe. I decided to put the flex pipe on the downpipe and that will help protect the exhaust manifold studs from snapping. And I also ordered another can of internal frame coating. So we'll also get to painting the inside of the quarter panel. Basically it comes with a little nozzle and you can stick it up here and get everything nice and coated on the inside. But we have a lot to do today. I also want to finish welding this quarter panel on. There's still gaps on this side because I'm planning on getting glass installed. Now, yes, the car is not painted, but I want to make sure that everything on the car fits before I get it painted. You know what I mean? And I also only have one side skirt for the car because when the crash happened, that other side just disappeared. But Omar has a pair for sale, so let's go pick them up. Hello, Two-Tone. For those of you who don't know, Omar is basically the S chassis parts plug, and he has like every single part you could ever imagine. So here we go, here's our skirts. These are actually the same exact style skirts that were on the car originally, and I also bought these wheels off of him. These are Urus NS01s. I am so hyped for these. Now these are a staggered set. The fronts are 17 by nine plus 30, and the rears are 17 by nine and a half plus 15 which is god spec for these wheels oh i'm so excited to try these on the car i knew i was picking up wheels nice wheels actually so i cleaned out the integra work truck this might be the cleanest this car has been in the past year after hauling i don't even know how many engines and transmissions at this point <laughs> too many or not enough you decide and if you're wondering what these skirts are these are considered jdm Chuki skirts. Now these skirts are reps. The OEM ones are plastic. This one's made by Dorky Dory. Pretty decent fit. These were actually paint matched to fit the seafoam green coupe. But Omar decided this car looks best OEM. And honestly, I can't agree more because this is one of those cars that they just got right from the factory. It's just perfect. He even had rear spats and a roof wing, but pig nose with a lip is all you need. If you happen to know someone with a real set of JDM Chuki skirts, please let me know, I will buy them. I've had a really hard time finding them. I actually found a set for sale on Facebook and I messaged the guy and he's like, oh, you're that guy rebuilding that S13? No, I don't, I don't agree with that. And then he didn't sell them to me. I wasn't even negotiating the price. I was gonna pay him full price. <sighs> Some people, man. If you know someone that has them, let me know. This is potentially one of my most expensive parts trips ever. Coming in at just around two grand. But honestly, not bad. Can't find these wheels anywhere, so. I'll take it. Dude, look at these freaking roads. Like, what? That would straight up take out an oil pan. They just leave it like that. There's so many of them. Can't wait to put these on the car. Woo. So to start us off today, very first step, let's install the exhaust gaskets and then install the exhaust onto the car. I also picked up matching hardware for the exhaust because one of my pet peeves is when you're working under the car and there's a whole bunch of random sizes and you have to keep crawling in and out and getting different size sockets. So I just like to run nice new hardware for the exhaust and I couldn't find any stainless steel at the hardware store. So I got 10.9 grade so they won't snap out for no reason. Now a good rule of thumb for exhaust hardware is to point it towards the rear of the car. And this kind of goes for any nut or bolt under the car. I've noticed a lot of manufacturers will have the nut side trailing. So we are going to match that method. 
And I'm also going to put this all together before I put it under the car because that'll be way easier. Oh, while I'm looking at this, some people were saying that my fender fitment was off. Well, yeah, it's not bolted in. <laughs> Now yes, these are lock nuts, meaning they have nylon in them. That nylon is just going to burn off. I prefer to use flange nuts and bolts, meaning they have like a built-in washer to them. I just feel like it gets a better grip on whatever you're working on. And they didn't have any without the nylon. It's not going to hurt just to melt off. If anything, that'll help hold it on better. Can't forget to plug in the O2 sensor. So we'll do that before we forget and just drive over it. Exhaust is good to go. Next step, let's put on the new intercooler. Third time's a charm, right? Oh, it's so clean. I don't want to bend any of these fins. Gotta be extra cautious. Oh, it's already on. And I also went ahead and mounted the rest of the intercooler piping as well. So this is honestly good to go. But Franzi just got here, which means I can take my rear lip back. Not only is my rear lip on this car, but if you guys have watched the Omar video, we also got a new hood for my 240 because the hood on my 240 has rust completely on the bottom. This one's pretty sweet because it comes with some patina. Man, the bottom of this is immaculate. I feel like the bottoms of hoods are usually not this clean, but jeez. The best way to do this by yourself is to take off the right side of the hood because if you take off the left side first, the prop will fold the hood over. First try. Some of you might not remember this, but when the crash first happened on my 240, I basically took all the good parts off of it and put it on Fran's car. Now she does have Type X tails of her own. They're still brand new in box. And she also has her own Type X wing, but I'll probably just leave the white one on here for now. But I will be taking my lip back because that's one of my favorite features of this car. And if you're wondering what lip this is, this is actually a G Gro lip. It's different from Type X because it's straight on the bottom versus the awkward opposite curve Whoop. Oh, it looks so much different without a rear lip on it what do you think oh it just looks a lot more stock that's true it is a lot more stock <laughs> <laughs> all right i guess we'll bring the stock tails there I'm not sure how many people know this, but the tail light filler, which is this metal garnish here, is actually different for the Type X tail light. The stock tail light does not have the same curve towards the center. You can kind of tell. This is more of a slope, and this one actually has a straight edge on the stock tail. This thing bends so easily. So I'm just so cautious when I take it off. Try and do it as evenly as possible. Stocks are back in action. For any spec. Now before I put these Type X tails back on my car, I want to actually take off the bumper so I can spray weld through primer on all the bare metal. All right, all of the welds are cleaned off. Got all the extra burnt paint off. Now I am just gonna wipe down any loose metal chunks that are still on it. Now 
got some weld through primer on here and I also sprayed some of the internal frame coating. Now I want to get the straw that goes in here and coat the entire inside. I think I left that over here. What are you drawing? <laughs> Man, it looks crazy. Good job. Thank you. All right, so check this out. You can actually take off the original sprayer and put on this nozzle with a tube on it. Hopefully this doesn't shoot me in the face putting this on. All right, well now we will stick it in the highest point. Let's start up here. Can you hear it? Move it down to the lower hole. Oh yeah, it's coming out good now. Let's fish it up this one. Oh, that's definitely getting a good coat if it's pouring out of all the seams. Put it in here too. Wow. <laughs> this is where it's gonna get satisfying. Spraying it inside the quarter panel. Actually, I could probably just put it in one of these holes. You can even see some of it oozing out of the seams in the quarter panel, which is a very good sign. That means it's getting a really good coating on the inside. Same with the wheel wells. It was coming out of some of the seams here. Yeah, it's good stuff. I really like that. While that's drying, I think we can start replacing the hood. You can see how rusty this hood was on the bottom. So we'll put this one that's rusty on the top on instead. And I also am going to replace this red fender here. A friend in Tennessee gave me this fender and it actually has a little bit more damage than I'd like to run. That blue parts card that I had, I got the hood off of it and we also have a nice fender off of it. So I'd much rather run this one. I think there's like one dent like right here. It's not bad. This hood is free to whoever needs it. It's honestly not bad. It could be repaired, but I don't know. It's just a little too rusty for me to run. Man, I love this blue. Should I paint the card this color? Kind of matches the valve covers, actually. It's so satisfying watching the panel gap close up right before my eyes. I was trying to take these off because I thought they were 10 mil, but these are actually screws. So I got a vice grip on here because <laughs> they're so crusty. I'm not even going to attempt trying to use a screwdriver on that. Man, these things just fit like a glove. I love good fitment. It's like my favorite thing about a car. This is the most common issue with mounting fenders on a 240. This bottom section here is usually blown out and crusty. Somehow this fender is in perfect condition. Well, not perfect condition, but it's usable. But I don't know if these holes are still threaded. So I think I'm going to try and see if this mount is still good. Because that mount is way better to utilize versus the bottom. I'm partially using this to film and partially so I can actually see what's going on in there. Moment of truth. Check out the fitment of the fender. What do we think? That looks insanely good. That's pretty close. Let's see if the door works. Wow. The fact that this fender to door gap is damn near perfect. Same with the bumper. Oh my gosh, even the body line is straight along the whole car. I think I'm actually going to leave the hood off because I think that'll be a lot easier to install the windshield. So I guess my very next step is to top off the coolant, 
because remember we drained a whole bunch replacing the turbo and then I need to start prepping the metal and prepping the area for this quarter panel to be welded I guess what this is coming to is that I need to turn the car around the best way to turn the car around is to just pull it out and pull it back in so test drive let's slap some wheels on oh shoot I forgot I don't even have a coil over on this one Something I completely forgot about. These quarter panels are unrolled. So this fat tire is definitely gonna rub really hard. So I think instead I'm gonna run my weaker offset wheels. These are plus 30. So this will probably work for now. This car feels so epic when it's on the ground. I guess all that's left is stealing the battery out of the work truck. Well, I guess I should move it first. Also, we'll leave the lights on to make sure that they work. <laughs> it's so quiet. Wow, no leaks too. All right, we're ready to rock. Oh my gosh, that was such a fun drive. Oh, I didn't realize this light was out. Oh, it actually fell out of the socket. More importantly, let's see how the engine's looking. The turbo was actually spooling up and building boost. So that was honestly really great to hear again. The car fell so fast, I was barely touching the throttle. I think I'm just so used to driving these Integras around, but... Man, it's out here. I need to put this light in it. That bothers me. Yeah, these connectors suck. They don't stay in. They don't have good continuity. There we go. Man, it is out here. It's a whole car this time. Oh my gosh. Honestly, this looks like a typical 240 now. And you know what, I can't complain. So good. I just moved it to be under the light. Figured it would glow a little better. And it does. I'm in love with this blue. How do you guys feel about a blue car? Ah, 
I don't know though, because the white is just so classic. Everything looks good. No leaks, nothing's wet. Wow, very satisfying, no complaints. Figured I'd enjoy this view while I finish up my leftover pita bowl. Well, I just finished eating dinner at 10.40 p.m. Maybe we can celebrate the day by getting some ice cream. Let's take this thing through the drive through <laughs> Oh, and I found my shift knob. It was in my door card. <laughs> that welded diff really holding me up. Thank you so much. No problem. Have a nice night. You too. We got the goods. This exhaust is so quiet. I can't get over that. Woo. Classic RB sound. I gotta rev it up. We gotta know what this thing sounds like. We got the car turned around successfully. Now I need to just tackle these last two pieces and I guess we're gonna start with taking off the hatch. Now I'm really hoping I still have the bend for the C pillar and hopefully even the cutoff piece from this B pillar. So I might have to check my scrap slash takeoff bin and see if we still have it. This is everything that I've taken off of the car that could fit in this bin. A lot of people have been asking for pieces of the car so I've just been saving it throughout this whole process. I figured when the car is done, maybe I can give away parts and pieces of it with special orders or something. I don't know. We'll figure something out down the line, but for now, this is where it lives. Except I'm going to take some out of here. Ooh, there we go. Seat pillar right here. And it looks to me that this might just be the exact point where this seat pillar was cut. That's pretty cool. So maybe I can drill some spot welds off of this and see what we can come up with. But let's get this hatch out of here first. Oh, there we go. All right, let's drill these out. All right, here's our new piece. Let's match it up to the car. Uh, no, this way. Like I can trim quite a bit off of this. Mash it in there really quick, get a good idea. All right, check it out. I've done some trimming and this fits like a glove. Beautiful. This is prepped, ready to be welded, but I need to try and get in the crevices here and grind off this undercoating that I put on here. And it looks like the Dremel is gonna do the job for us. Panel is prepped. I'm going to spray some weld through primer on it. And while the weld through primer is drying, let's start working on the B pillar. I was starting to get worried because I wasn't seeing it. Look at that bent frame rail. But luckily, I came across I came across this one, but unfortunately this is for the other side of the car, but I did find this sliver. This is all we have to work with. This goes right here. An important thing to mention about this B pillar, it is reinforced, but only slightly. There's a double layer right here, and this whole section, this whole little square, is only held on by one spot weld. Here's what I'm thinking for how I'm going to attack this. I would much rather cut the top of this, but obviously we can't do that because we only have the bottom piece of this roof. 
If I cut the top, I'm moving this piece up and that curve won't match the same. This curve is already perfectly form-fitted to fit right there. So instead I'm going to shave the bottom layer here. That way we can get a much better weld onto the metal and also I can weld this reinforcement a lot better that way. But I'm actually gonna take out the seat before I start any of that. I know, I'm just now taking out the seat. You would think I would have taken this out when I was doing that entire side of the car, but this is really close and I feel like even if I covered it up with a blanket or something, it would still affect it. Plus it's only four bolts. And while we're over here, I figured I might as well figure out this dent. I don't know how this happened. That is way better. Oh my gosh. And I actually covered up the interior this time. I really wish I would have done that sooner. Don't know why I didn't. Learn from my mistakes. All right, we got a nice chunk cut out of this quarter panel. And I also went ahead and prepped the metal on our new sliver. Our top line is gonna be correct because it's the same panel. And same thing with our C-pillar. I don't want the panels to be overlapping because we don't want a big gap. And this part is very important. What I plan to do with that section is actually shave a bit of the top off the outer skin layer. That way when I'm installing this, I can fill in the weld from the lowest panel and build up to the top panel. And also while we have the access here, I'm gonna spray some weld through primer and undercoating and cavity wax in that hole. Quarter panel sliver is now prepped and I'll show you how it fits on here. So you can kind of tell I chamfered the top layer ever so slightly and that'll allow the weld to hit the bottom panel first. I'm gonna spray weld through primer on this and while that one's drying, we can start welding this side. All right, the quarter panel is officially welded on. I haven't even coated this or grinded this down yet, and it is honestly so difficult to weld to this paper thin metal, but luckily we did have some thick pieces to weld, so this was really satisfying to get a good bead on. But all right, let's grind down the areas where the window will sit, right along this edge and this edge, and then we'll coat it with some primer and get a good feel for the car. I'm pretty sure those were the last two pieces I needed to weld on the car. I'm sure I'll find something else, I mean, there was a whole lot of things we welded on this car, the entire car. Got this all grinded smooth, good enough for a window. Throw some weld through primer on it. Moment of truth. Man, that looks like it fits great actually. Wow. That's such a relief. Okay, that's one out of three panels <laughs> done, thanks. <laughs> so some of you may know, but I actually have 180SX glass. Uh, unfortunately, the seals are not in the best shape. They're actually torn. But the 240 glass that I had is in good shape. The seals are all intact. So we're actually gonna try and swap over the seals to a 180 glass. So this is a 240 seal that we just took off of one of my quarter glasses. We're putting it on the 180 glass. Have you ever done this before? Swapping no. the seal? No. This is the first time. This is the first time. I mean, it looks like it's fitting great, honestly. Yeah. I didn't know you could even do that. Yeah, we just gotta throw a back seal uh, with your thing. So that way, after we put it on, uh, sometimes the molding starts lifting. Mm -hmm. And that's what, that way you, you don't have problems in the future, like the molding lifting or anything like that. I see, I see. See, this is why I called you out here, man. You know <laughs> what you're doing. <laughs> So this is the back seal? Yeah. I see. Man, this glass changes the whole look of the car. Whew. 180, what? Super fine coating with some Japanese lettering. Hmm, interesting. Fitment is so good. 
I'm very proud. All right, thank you, Cisco. Anytime, man. Absolutely killed it on this glass install. If you guys are in the area, in the Midwest, I'll be sure to attach his information so that you guys can get quality work done as well. But till next time, bro. Appreciate it. Thank you. This glass looks great. Absolutely changes the whole vibe of the car. And this glass actually came with the sticker on there. Wonder if that was installed in Japan. You know, JDM stickers or whatever. What do you think? Looks real. It does look real. <laughs> it looks a lot more like a car now. It's no, it so exciting. crazy. I can't believe how good it looks. I cannot believe, yeah, I really cannot believe how well these windows fit. I was really worried about it, but we nailed it. Especially the front one. Everything fits so nicely. Well, I guess I have two spare quarter glass windows with no seals. So if you want this glass, let me know. Otherwise, I really don't have any use for them now. Now, I'm sure a lot of you are wondering why I put the glass on before I got the car painted. That is because I wanted to run this car at least this year before worrying about paint. I'm definitely not going to be driving this car a lot, and especially not if it's raining. What I want to do is, in the off-season, like winter, get the car completely stripped down to bare metal again, and then get the car acid dipped. Or, I don't know if it's acid or what, but I know that there's restoration projects that people dip their cars in, and it removes all the rust and paint and everything out of it. So I ideally would like to do that because I want this car to last forever, especially after putting all this work into it. And that's part of the long-term goal. So for the summer, this car will look like this. I'm not gonna worry about paint, just gonna run it how it is. Plus it helps tell the story, you know? I don't know. But thank you guys for sticking around. Don't forget to drop a like on the video and subscribe if you aren't already. And we just reached 100,000 subscribers, which is insane. So thank you guys. So now's your chance to join the pre 200K gang. <laughs> In the next video, I think I wanna start mounting some of the arrow pieces. So that'll be exciting. Till next time.